Eo. Electro. Dendro. Anima. Over the course of a month, I've developed four different Traveler teams, with the sole goal of 36 Starring Abyss with every Traveler variant. Not only that, each team was specially crafted to make Traveler deal the most damage or take the most field time within each team. Why would anyone engage in this resilience behavior, you ask? Well, let me take you back in time, where it all started. On September 24th, a somewhat known Discord server known as Traveler Mains updated their Abyss-related roles. This revamp introduced three new Abyss roles, with the most glorious among them being Abyssal Sovereign. To get this role, you had to post video proof of you using four different Traveler teams, with each one using its own element. Additionally, you can't overlap between teammates, meaning that you had to use at least 12 different characters for the Traveler teams. This doesn't even include the characters from the other half of Abyss, meaning that you have to have at least 16 characters used in total. Oh yeah, you also had the 36 star Abyss on top of that, essentially 9 star flooring 12, as a base requirement. And if that wasn't difficult enough, I also decided to impose my own restriction. Traveler had to deal the most damage, or at least close to it. Luckily enough, I did have a solid amount of characters to utilize given the status of my account. However, quite a few characters available to me couldn't be used in the Traveler teams because of my own imposed restriction. The list of characters I wasn't able to use in those teams includes, but isn't limited to, Raiden, Ganyu, Xiao, and Sino, as these characters would do more damage than the Traveler at around half the investment that Traveler would need to deal damage. We can't have all these other characters outshining Traveler, can we? Before I got started on making the Traveler teams though, I made the other team for Abyss, which consisted of Shelling, Shincho, Sucrose, and Bennett, a classic national comp. Now before you say, oh you're a meta slave, this video must have been so easy to do, I like to draw your attention to the level 60 Bennett and level 70 Shincho, and the fact that my Bennett is C3, so his burst is level 6, and the unmaxed talent levels. I think you get the idea. This is supposed to show the power of Traveler, not the power of meta, but I mean, you know. It's, Traveler still needs to kind of get carried a little bit here and there. I also wanted to be able to do the second half of Abyss with the Traveler teams if I could, as that half had a higher DPS check to me on floor 12. After eliminating all these characters, this was what I had left to use. It's not a bad list to choose from, but quite a few of these characters were very difficult to synergize with Traveler in general. Now, longtime viewers know that I've already used GOMC in Abyss, with the team consisting of GOMC, Zhongli, Chongyun, and Yona. However, I can't use that exact team, and that's because of this boss whose name is so long it could be a light novel title. Seriously, whoever made this name really needs to touch grass. To finish Spiral Abyss in time, I needed an Electro character in the party, so I subbed out Diona for Kuki, fully sending my team in place. Also, all character builds for every team will be at the end of the video, and this video would be way too boring if I talked about all the details that I went through for every single team. So let me show you the teams I settled on. You might know this, every team has one or more Electro characters. This is because I wanted to use these teams in the second half. Thanks enemy, that requires you to have a specific element so that you can finish the fight in time and that cloaks every flipping 5 seconds. With the teams finally set, I got to farming. There's a really good reason why this video took so long. Between farming for ascension materials, talent books, and weapon materials, I was pretty hard pressed to get everything I needed to level, needed to level up. Additionally, I also had to practice with certain mechanics related to Traveler. Animo MC can pull off a static tornado with their ult, but I would have to utilize the wall of the abyss since I didn't have Ningguang or Zhongli in the party. GOMC can do double the skill damage utilizing their C2, but it requires really precise placement. Electro MC has an interesting swapping mechanic where if you swap to a character while just ab above the talismans that drop from her skill, both characters receive the ER benefit and Electro MC still gets the cooldown reduction. Dendro MC's passive that scales off EM doesn't work for scaled EM sharing, like from Sucrose. It only works for non-scaling sources like 4-piece instructors and the new craftable Claymore, which I put on to Dory. After several weeks of grinding and practicing with travelers in general, I descended into the abyss. First up is Animo MC. This was by far the team I was most worried about. Animo MC has the least damage potential out of all the MCs without consistent access to stack tornado tech, and I did all I can to bolster this team's damage. Well, all I wanted to anyhow. 
I had remade this team around five times, and each time the team did not seem it was capable of handling the second half. Despite my best efforts, Animal MC's team could not reasonably do the second half of the fourth wall due to the lack of overall DPS, so I eventually had to place them in the first half of the wall instead. Additionally, I also had to place Raiden on the national team now, which is now just rational at this point, because you need Electro for the second half of Chamber 3, and there's nothing I can do about that, so the logical conclusion was just to use Raiden, which is clearly synergized as well with the rest of the national team members, and is possibly one of the most powerful comps in the game. Uh, this video is becoming more and more like a national team video rather than a traveler video, huh? While I was initially downcast at the fact that I had to use National in the second half, I still had a job to do in the first half. So, got to work. Let's go! There's nothing. There we go, okay. Hey, let's go! We did it! With Animo done, it was GOMC's turn next to show that it is possible to do the second half of this abyss as a main DPS. Alright. Let's go, GOMC! Show the world what you've got! There we go. 
Let's keep it going. Come on, go to the stairs, buddy. Okay. Don't go to the stairs. That's okay, too. The stairs. There you go. right now to your ass? You best be stepping. Oh no you don't. You're not getting back into your cloak form. No you don't. Get out of here. And there we go. That's GMC done. Unfortunately, my jubilance didn't last very long, as I was immediately humbled right after this as Electro MC encountered similar DPS check issues to Animo MC. This resulted in me swapping the team to the first half, just as I did for Animo. Hey, there we go. Next. There we go. Easy, let's go.
Hey, let's go. Finally, it was time for the last element, Dendro, which I took into the second half with a C-Zero Traveler to make up for all the mishaps the Animo and Electro faced. The comp I used had quite a bit of issues with the first chamber though, because believe it or not, the Archer and Shielder that are in the second wave do a lot of damage and they also have a lot of stagger. Plus, when they do summon their familiars, they actually do a lot of damage and I kind of got a little bit angry. Oh my god. Stop, bro. Come on, let me kill you. Die. Alrighty. That was rough. But at least we did it. Holy mother of god. Next came the true difficulty of this abyss. Magutenki and Asmon. Goodbye. <laughs> There we go. That's better. There we go. Back, boys. Oh my god. Way too close. Hey, there we go. Easy clap. You're not hidden at all, buddy. Especially when there's big fat arrows indicating your position. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can hide, you fool? Yeah, my other teams may not have quicken access, but this one does. So get destroyed, you idiot. Fool. 
You're at the border, bro. You can't do anything anymore. Die. Alright, we'll kill you with an E. Shoot. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh, let's go. We did it. And so I had completed my objective of using every traveler. Admittedly, I felt that Animo and Electro MC didn't do nearly enough in their teams in terms of DPS, but it just showed that I had a long way to go. Pushing this feeling aside, I had yet to claim my role, so I edited the full Abyss runs together and posted it to the Traveler Mains Discord server. By the way, the link is in the description if you want to watch the full runs. And the next day, I had received my prize, the Abyssal Sovereign role. These are all the builds of the characters used in this video. Thank you to Inca.network for creating a great system to showcase builds, and to Traveler Mains for providing inspiration for this video. This video has probably taken the most time out of any video on this channel, not only to edit, but to script write, and also to gather all the resources and go through a bunch of spreadsheets. Yeah, I know, this is some real nerd stuff, okay? I actually TC occasionally from time to time. If you enjoyed this video, you might like watching my other videos. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.